it's Craig Strom. I am the income engineer. Today I'm coming to you as Craig Strom, the paralegal, the paralegal certified financial planner. I work with an awesome law firm in Orange County, California, and through the miracle of technology, I also work with folks all over the country in many cases where we can help with a variety of legal questions as a firm, and we can help in some cases where things weren't done right. So. CPA partners and attorney partners, people that we work with and other financial advisors, other professionals, they know that my law firm that I work with, we're known for getting stuff done. Unfortunately, the last two client introductions that I've received, I took those phone calls today. My job is to actually field those intake phone calls to get to know the, the person who's asking questions. They call in to their CPA or their attorney or their financial advisor, and their financial advisor, for example, says, maybe you should talk to the team at Barth Calderon. That is the law firm that I work with. And I am responsible, as the paralegal certified financial planner on the team, for taking that initial phone call and, and finding out what the details might be to see if we're a good fit or to see whether or not I should make an introduction to uh, someone else. Now, the reason I'm recording this today, kind of man on the street again, is number one, I'm just frustrated. I've taken two phone calls today that were introduced by, uh, one introduced by a great CPA that we work with, and another introduced by an awesome financial advisor that we work with, and unfortunately, I've had to give bad news in both situations. It wasn't even a matter of, moving the uh, call or introduction forward to one of our attorneys because as a 21-year veteran certified financial planner and a paralegal with a law firm, I know the answer to quite a few of these questions that people are asking and I had to deliver bad news twice today, twice. First, I get a, a phone call with a very nice lady who uh, gives me the full-blown description of some major financial drama and legal drama in her family's estate. Now this is with her mom and her dad. Her mom and dad have passed away and now she is the oldest. She's the one who figured that she's the one to take care of the estate. Trouble is mom and dad did not have their living trust finished. They got a living trust. This has happened now. This is the part that actually really fries me. This has happened twice in the last several weeks that I spoke with someone who had one of these do-it-yourself uh, trusts where they went online to some company and they got a really cheap deal on a living trust. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about a situation where someone got a Susie Orman trust. Well, this is exactly the same scenario. They got a DIY, do-it-yourself, estate plan, a living trust, and they missed one really important detail, that I had to be the bearer of bad news with this nice lady, the daughter, who contacted their financial advisor, and then their financial advisor said, contact the team uh, over there where Craig works. I had to be the bearer of very bad news to tell her that I'm sorry if your mom and dad never put their primary residence and their vacation home in their living trust, you're gonna have to open a probate. Here's the fun part. The vacation home is in Hawaii. <laughs> so mom and dad went and got a DIY living trust. They got it because it's a great cheap deal and I don't wanna pay those darn attorneys. Well, guess what? Daughter will now have to open a probate, meaning in the probate court system in Orange County, California, and then she'll have to open a probate in Hawaii to get the property in her name, just to get the property transferred where she can actually control it, sell it, do anything with it. It's most likely going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve to $13,000 minimum. And that's not just because attorneys are terrible and charge too much money. Those are statutory minimum fees that it costs money to open up a probate in two states. She's going to have to have an attorney in Hawaii and an attorney, of course, here in California. 
if only she had taken my offer, for example, which is if you work with my firm and you have a good basic estate plan that you need where you have a home, maybe a vacation home, it's not terribly complicated. Instead of paying $2,500 for a, a full-blown law firm trust, that's the kind of standard going rate nowadays, $2,500 to $3,000 when I'm recording this in January 2020, that's kind of the price. I am able to facilitate through my partnership with my law firm and my supervising attorney, I'm able to do living trusts and complete estate plans for about $1,800. I mean, that's a great savings, as much as seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900 off a standard living trust price. Because I'm a paralegal, I'm able to actually help facilitate a great value when it comes to getting your estate plan done. And unfortunately, folks go after cheap, cheap, cheap because they don't want to pay an attorney. And then they miss, and it happened again today, I talked to somebody, remember twice, that they didn't get the most important part done. They didn't actually put the houses, the real estate, in the living trust. Ugh. So I got that call, and then I headed from that. I had one appointment this morning. I stopped, I took that call, and then I headed to this next uh, phone call where I had to make, uh, well, I had another stop and then a phone call coming up in five minutes with a third person today. Please, I hope that's going to be a good ending to the day. So in the gap, I just couldn't, I couldn't help myself. I pulled over here at Home Depot so that I could actually rant a little bit and share this with you, the viewer, in hopes that you'll have this conversation with your family, with your mom, dad, sisters, brothers, sons, daughters. Make sure they don't make this mistake. The simple thing that could have fixed it all is if mom and dad had gotten their discount cheap trust, yes, but if they'd gotten it through a law firm like me with my firm, I would have been making sure that their house and their vacation home is titled correctly in their living trust, and then it would have been easy super easy for me to tell this wonderful lady, don't worry about it, it's going to be a piece of cake to settle up mom and dad's estate because you had a living trust. Sadly, she's going to have to open probate. My law firm can help with that, um, and but we'd rather not. We'd rather have it fixed correctly. The second one, oh, it made my heart sink. I, I spoke with another a gentleman today who was referred in uh, to me by his uh, CPA, I believe. And this was a really sad story. He is 79 years old, and his 46-year-old, 47-year-old daughter had a brain aneurysm. She actually had a burst aneurysm in her brain, which wiped her out. She's alive, but she's on life support, non-responsive. She's probably not in control of her, her faculties and her, you know, she's, she's really in this limbo state and the the father is just beside himself because he doesn't know what to do and he's calling me well he called his cpa and his cpa said talk to craig over at barth calderon and see if there's anything they can do well as it turns out there isn't if his daughter is not uh, legally able to take care of her own business and the doctor will determine if a doctor says that she is incompetent, that she is unable to take care of her own business, she cannot sign a power of attorney. That's what dad was hoping. Is there some way that we can get a power of attorney for my daughter so I can take care of things for her, so I can get her moved out here to where I live so I can take care of her? And unfortunately, the answer I had to share with him was no. No, you cannot get a power of attorney on someone who is unconscious or unable to or deemed unfit to make their own decisions. So in his case, the only real option is what's called a conservatorship. You actually have to go to the court systems and petition to be appointed as the conservator, the guardian, the person in charge of that person's business affairs. And that's a timely process. In California, it's also quite expensive, many thousands of dollars. So the whole moral of this, this video today, if anything I can share with you is, number one, if you don't have your living trust, your wills, your powers of attorney all done, 
please send me an email, Craig, K-R-A-I-G, at Craigstrom, S-T-R-O-M dot com, Craig at Craigstrom dot com. Let's connect so that I can help you get your own plan in place. If you have a living trust and you own a home or a vacation house, go get your tax bill and make sure that your home actually has the title of your living trust on your tax statement. Double check it. Ask your mom and dad, ask your brothers and sisters, please, sons and daughters, ask them to verify that they actually put their property, their car collection, their valuables, their big investment account, all of those things that you might want to, to be able to disperse to your family, they will not go smoothly if you don't have them titled correctly in your trust. If you have questions, feel free, Craig at CraigStrom.com, signing out, take care.